this video, uh, we will see how to use a Zebra Designer version 3 for uh, designing basic labels without any uh, issue that normally people face in uh, the margins and all. Okay, so I'll just uh, guide you through some of the best pro practices you can adopt in uh, designing. And also, I will guide you how to generate the PRN files uh, so that the files can be the PRN files can be integrated into your uh, applications. The, the development part that you can do with your own software to print without uh, using design and uh, the drivers okay so let's start so here we are on the desktop uh, so i start zebra designer version 3 so what i have here is a professional version so you can download the essential which is free and uh, professional is the license so with your uh, free essential uh, installation you can design a basic uh, uh, design part uh, you can uh, uh, print uh, directly to the printer there is no limitation as such and you can also generate the prn files out of it okay only thing is you cannot connect to database part so that is uh, professional uh, can uh, do the uh, database connectivity part okay so now our uh, uh, designer version 3 is open so all you have uh, here is uh, create a new label and open and then you have this banner page uh, to, to lead you to the uh, drivers and uh, the help page home page for the zebra designer on our uh, site okay so now let's click uh, create new label if you have any existing labels it's the recent files all will be listed here you just click and uh, open the uh, existing label files if you have so now for this uh, training i just click uh, create a new label So then it will ask which printer you want to, to design on to. So this is very important. Uh, let's say you don't have a printer, but you still you can download, install a driver, the relevant driver, and then you can start designing on it. So it's not that you need a printer to start um, working with the design. Okay, but you you should have one driver installed. That it should be Zebra Designer driver should be installed. So my active printer here is uh, the D500R uh, 203DP. So I've selected that printer from the drop-down list. Okay. So you can uh, modify the printer settings. So thing to note here is each design that you create can have its own unique printer settings. Okay. Let's say you have a uh, design which is supposed to be printed on a resin label. So resin label obviously requires higher darkness settings and a lower print speed. So you have to set a darkness of 25 okay and a speed of around 3 ips or a 2 ips so that is one design and then you design something else for a paper label so that could be a shipping label obviously so in those scenarios you will be setting a darkness of around 12 and a speed of maximum speed of 6 ips or 8 inches per second you can do that so you don't have to fiddle around with the windows driver settings per se okay so each label can have its own driver settings so if you want to change any uh, quality parameters the print related settings you have to come back to the design template open the design change its driver settings not the windows driver setting so if you change around the windows driver setting nothing will take effect when you print okay so now i just show that printer properties here what you can do so i just go to print options and here is where you can change the print speed and the darkness parameter okay so now i just reduce the speed to 4 and i put the darkness to 15 okay i have a paper label here and i use a wax resin ribbon so for that matter i put the darkness at 15 okay and you have the operation mode here so here you can set the uh, mode where on which the printer is supposed to work on so whether it should be in tear of mode, peel of mode, or cutter or so depending on the, the physical printer that you have, select these modes. Okay, so now I am I'm working with my printer with tear off, so I select this option. So that's all you can do over here in the driver parameters of the design. I just click OK and come to next. So here uh, the page size is very important. So this is where uh, most of the mistakes happen. So when you are designing for smaller size labels, so this is the critical part here. So and uh, I'll just tell you what all the best practice you can do on this page. Huh? So always go for the print on a sheet of paper, which is the manually set and modify the page size. Okay. So the default is actually here automatic. So you don't have the control to 
select whether your uh, what is your label's uh, left margin and the right margin. So when I say margin, whenever you get a label, there is always a leading edge further to the label, right? So there is a 2 mm uh, uh, leading edge or a 3 mm leading edge. So those part is where you define it here. Once you define it here only, that can be done on the label uh, parameters, which I will show you again. So here I select the manual option. Okay. So the units of measurement can be selected here, whether it should be in centimeter, inches, or millimeters, or dots. Okay. So it's always preferable to be in millimeters. Okay. So now let us assume that I have a label of uh, 100 by 100 millimeter. Okay. So I I select 100, uh, not, it should not be in 100 here. So obviously the labels left and right, there will be a leading gaps also, right? So I put 106. So I, I just measured the, there is a 3 mm gap towards the left and 3 mm gap towards the right also, okay? Other than the interlabel gaps. So I put the height also has 100. So here, I width, I put it as 106 and the height here is 100 mm, okay. So we'll come to the label parts. Now what, what we are defining here is the page size, not the label size. So now coming to the next page, uh, so here is where you design the orientation part, how you want the uh, print to come, whether it should be in portrait mode or landscape mode. So you can see the preview here, how it comes out from the printer if it is in portrait mode. You can see the ABC is coming this way. So if I select landscape, it will print this way. Okay, so you can design the label accordingly. So let's put it back to portrait. And what this rotated mode does is, you can see how the label comes out, how the print comes out of the printer. So if I am standing in front of the printer, this is how the print part will come. Okay, so this is all, all fine if you are using a desktop or a tabletop printers, which is kept on a desk. So imagine if you are going for a mobile printer. So mobile printers typically will be hanging on from the shoulder, uh, on a shoulder strap or will be uh, put onto the belt. So it is facing downwards. In those scenarios, if you are printing this way, you have to see what the print content is after tearing off the label and taking it on your hand. So rather than that, if it is in this mode, the, the person standing uh, with this uh, printer on his shoulder strap or on his hip belt can see what is getting printed directly. So instead of tearing off, off and then rotating and see. So that is the option, Why that is the uh, purpose what this uh, rotated option is given. Okay. So for our demo, I just take it out. So let's click next. So now here is the label dimension part comes in. So this is where you... You, you mentioned the exact label size. The previous one was a page size. So this is your page size and this is going to be your label size. Okay. So now it is showing 106 mm and height of 100 mm. Okay. So now I say that label is 100 mm for me. I put 100 and click anywhere. So you can see there is a gap coming in now. Okay. So now there should be a 3 mm gap here. 3 mm gap here. So I left, I say it is 3 mm. Again, you click anywhere. Okay, so it comes back to the 3 mm left and 3 mm right. So this is how you have to design. So a lot of people make the mistake here. They mention it is 100. So when they print, what happens is uh, this, uh, the, the leftmost text sometimes get cut. So they actually do the adjustment by moving the entire content towards the right. So that is not the right option. So they will get into issues if they have multi multi uh, ups labels like a, a two up label or a three up label. So now imagine this being a hundred mm by hundred mm, right? So let's let's say you you want to design something for uh, thirty by thirty labels. So let's say thirty by thirty. So 30, 30, 30, you will have 90 mm totally. And there is a hinter label gap of 2 mm. Okay, so between 30 and the next 30, there is a 2 mm gap. Okay, so 30 plus 30 plus 90, and then the two inter label gaps of 2 mm plus 2 mm. So that will come to 94. And then there is a leading margin of left margin of 3 mm, and then the right margin of 3 mm. So all put together, it will come to around 100 mm. 
let's see how we have to design that part huh? so now i say my page width is 100 so based on the calculation i told so my page width is 100 and my height is obviously 30 mm right so i told 30 by 30 right so my page height is 30 mm and my uh, label height width is 100 next next so my label dimension is 30 mm okay and um, my left margin is 3 mm that is fine now you only see uh, one label here okay so now it is supposed to be three labels across right so now here you have this labels across count here horizontal count so make it two three so now we have three labels and there are no inter label gaps mentioned here so you have to mention the horizontal gap as 2 mm which is what i told so 2 is going to be my inter label gap so just click anywhere you will get the preview correct so now there is a 3 mm gap here 3 mm gap here 2 mm of inter label gaps okay so, so this is how you um, make the label design uh, label size properly into the design part Okay, so now let's say finish. So I'm straight away going into the complicated part of designing the small labels. Itself. So you, you can be familiar in uh, designing a bigger labels. So bigger labels are very easy for you to design. So now I just say finish. So this is how your design part comes out. Okay, so people normally think that they have to design for all the labels. So there is a three labels across here, right? It's not so you will be designing only for this label okay and you will be saying file print it should go to three labels so that is how you are supposed to design not to design for all the three contents okay so now let's uh, say how to uh, design um, so you you have these options in the left corner uh, to select a text or a barcode or a picture or these shapes whether you want to select a rectangle line or some other ellipse elliptical form so circle or elliptical you can design it okay so now i just click text and then come back to the design click here so you have the option to do some input for the text field okay so i just double click that field and i can put some name come in information here so what i put is uh, company name okay so i'll come to the other parts later i just say apply close so now this design it is out of the uh, labels design area so if i just click here you can see it is showing in red okay that is because it is out of the labels design area so i just click drag and put it back into the relevant area so now it is all proper right and one more thing to note here is this text if you see here you can see one printer icon coming down okay so that is because it is the uh, printer resident font that is being used okay so now you can see on top what font the uh, designer is using okay so i just drop down you can see the list of uh, zebra fonts all these are zebra specific fonts so this CG trim rate font is the best option if you want to generate the PRN files. Okay, so uh, if you don't want to uh, generate PRN files, you can go ahead and select any of the font that you have on Windows. Okay, so just select any of the font. So I select the Arial font. So click here. You can see it's gone out of the margin. That's why it has gone to red. So I click and bring it back to the area. So this is how you select a different font okay so now i get it back to uh, the uh, zebra font itself okay so the font that i was using is cg trim rate i select it back put the text back to the correct margin so this is done so now to uh, to make it uh, more uh, glossy i just put a line and then i select a barcode click it come down here 
and then I can select a barcode where I want to position and I want to change the data and the barcode symbology select it double click it you have the option coming in here so what is the barcode data that is going to be in here and what barcode symbology you want code 128 or any other uh, symbology you want select that okay so this is how you can put a barcode into the design so done so now a uh, few more things that you can do a uh, few of the uh, key parameters that has been introduced in version 3 what you can do is the position okay so you want to uh, rotate the barcode so you can you have to come down here and then do this rotation parameters okay so now the same thing um, so before doing rotation make sure the uh, barcode is um, uh, not in graphical form huh? so here uh, uh, the uh, uh, the printing optimization that comes in here you can see the printer font that is there here right so you have to for rotation it is always mentioned you have to put it in graphical format okay so you can put it in graphical form. otherwise you can only rotate in uh, uh, 90 degrees or 180 degree part so i'll show that part also so i just select the printer font here for the barcode so now we'll come to position so i can put uh, uh, 90 degree here apply so it just goes to 90 degree okay. so thing the thing new thing about our uh, design is uh, you can do a rotation like this also so this is actually a new part uh, on designer version 3 this was not in uh, version 2 so this way also we can do design so if at all there is a requirement like this to print yes you can do it so if it's, no one does it but still you can you have the option to do this way also okay so now i just say file print so you can see the number of copies is three here uh, so it's it's occupied for all the three labels so i only designed for one but i just selected three copies it just go to three we just selected two it comes to second label so normally when you are uh, doing a three ups and generating a prn file out of it if you're not going to print directly to the printer you're just designing to create a prn file always make sure you are, you are selecting three labels and then you generate the PRN file give it across to developer okay so now uh, before I uh, show you the the PRN file part let us put this back uh, to uh, the printer resident form because now you see the printer icon is missing on this right because of this uh, rotation part so I put it back to this way which is the horizontal exact horizontal way so now the printer uh, font has come back so now i say file print and you have the option here print to file yeah? so for generating prn files you have to select this and say print so it will ask for a, a file name to be generated so i just say three up I can put a txt also directly you can leave it as it is it will generate a three up dot uh, prn file as a name okay so now it is being saved on my desktop folder under the training so i just say save so minimize let's go to the desktop and see the training folder so i just open the training folder so you can see a three up dot text being created here so just open and see how the file looks like so this is how the file looks like okay so before you hand it over hand over this um, uh, file to a developer always remove the the best uh, practices always remove the top contents so the one part you need to be remembering is the this is called the zpl script okay this is what the printer understands so the driver that we used is that we zd 500 r uh, 203 dp zpl right so this is the driver zpl driver so this is actually the zebra programming language so this entire script so always remember uh, the caret xa to caret xz is one job okay so what this uh, caret xa to caret xz is doing here is it's the printer related settings 
what speed the printer should run, what darkness the printer should run on. Okay. So once you integrate this script into any application, uh, you don't have the freedom of changing the printer settings on your own. So even if you, right now if you see the darkness we set was 15. So tomorrow let's say you want to increase the darkness to 18 or 19. You cannot do it because the application is coming with a darkness of 15. So even if you change the darkness to 15, 18, the, once the print is given, the printer will again go back to 15 darkness because the 15 is coming here. So you don't have control on the printer. So for you to have control on the printer, it is always advisable to remove the printer related settings from the PRM file. So how to see where the printer related settings end is, look out for the caret XA and look out for the caret XZ, the first set of caret XA to caret XZ. And then there is another set that will start. So this is exactly your label content. So this caret XA to caret XZ is your label content. So this is the content that is going to the printer. You can see the company name and the barcode value here. Okay. So what I do is I select the top entire content up to caret XA. The first, set the second caret XA here. So you can remove everything. So save this file and give it across to your developer. So this is how you uh, design a label, create a PRN file and use it in your application. Okay, thanks. Thanks for watching the video.